The number four team in the country goes down to North Carolina, a big ACC showdown, and the Irish fall by a score of 60 to 50 to the Tar Heels. So everyone, welcome to Slasher U. I'm your host, Christian Rao, here with my co-host, Steve Beck. We're going to break down this game. Number 22, UNC, beating the fourth team in the country, Notre Dame, by 10 points. This was uh, an interesting one. I was pretty shocked with the, mm-hmm. the ending, with the result. However, North Carolina came to play. They had some help with their with their bench. Their bench played fantastic, especially going to point out the freshman, Paulina Paris from Conkers, New York. She looked really good in this one. Her three-point was fantastic. She found some good lanes for shooting. I really liked what she had in this one. Uh, but North Carolina looked really good in this one and proved that they are not going away anytime soon in the ACC, Steve. No, they are not, Christian. And I was really impressed with how their front court stepped up in this game. I think they knew going in that you know that they would probably potentially have an advantage inside. Not that Notre Dame has a bad front court, but I think certainly talent wise, I mean, you, you look at you know Alyssa us to be. I mean, she's a really she's just a great forward in that she can play, you know, closer to the basket if need be, but you kind of want her to be free to maybe step out a little bit. And Lauren Ebo, uh, you know, the, you know, the, the graduate senior, she had a big game, 19 rebounds. I mean, I mean, that that's, I don't care. I don't care what level you're playing. 19 rebounds is pretty impressive, you know, and uh, they just dominated the boards. I think they clogged uh, the paint forcing Notre Dame to take shots that perhaps they ordinarily have not had to take, you know, in other games earlier on the year. But yeah, yeah. North Carolina is one of those teams that I think we're still learning about. I mean, you look on paper, well, this is pretty interesting. This is pretty interesting, but, 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 you know, uh, if you have that kind of performance against the number four team in the country and Notre Dame has earned that ranking, uh, then suddenly uh, you can kind of maybe erase some of those butts and say, hmm, interesting, interesting. Yeah, Ebo, even though she had 19 rebounds and even though Notre Dame won the rebounding uh, contest 42 to 34, North Carolina still found a way to win this game. When I look at Notre Dame and obviously after watching the game, I kind of know how this fell, fell out. Livia Miles still played a great game. 15 points. Mm-hmm. She had five assists, seven boards. She, when she she had an opportunity to get to the lane, she did. There were some very good plays that she made. I don't know if I can give her the blame on this one. I don't think I will. And I'm not really going to point any blame, to be honest. But one thing that's a glaring issue is Dana Mabry was one for 11 from the three-point line. The Irish were two for 22. They were 9% from the three-point line. This is something that is usually something that's in their their arsenal that is a a pretty safe bet and not something that they only can get six points from. Their three-point shooting was horrendous, and I think that was a huge miss from Notre Dame to, um, and no pun intended, obviously huge miss. They missed 20 of them. A uh, the huge issue here for the Irish and why they lost this game. Mabry is one of the top three-point shooters in the program history. It was just a bad night for her, only finished with seven points. That just can't happen when you're playing a tough conference opponent. Right. Now, of course, I have to get my back up because she's a short Jersey Shore Conference legend. You know, so so just like you always kind of push your wish to New York people, I I gotta I gotta come out and defend my <laughs> my, my Jersey Shore place. But, but yeah, but you know, Mabry, she's so talented that when she has an off night, it's much more glaring. You know, we were talking uh, when we were breaking down the Kentucky men's game about Shibway and how is how what a horrible game that he played. Sometimes great players are gonna have those kind of days, but I, I think Notre Dame learned some lessons. They hung in the game. Just really, there were two times in this game where Notre Dame went cold and the lady Tar Heels took advantage of it. I mean, they shot like 17.6% the first quarter Notre Dame. I, it, it's hard, it's hard to recover from that. It's really, really tough to recover from that. And then there was like a five plus minute drought in the third quarter. And those were the two times that North Carolina not only built their lead, but then they padded to it. I mean, they built it in the first quarter, they padded it in the third quarter. And that was the difference as well as um, you talked about how Notre Dame had more rebounds in total as far as rebounds at, crucial times 
I would say that's where North Carolina's front court really stepped up. So sometimes, I mean, yes, rebounds are one of those stats. Either you have a rebound or you don't. But uh, some of those tough stops inside where, you know, especially with Ebo uh, making those tough stops inside and then getting control of the ball um, on some of the shots that got forced up by Notre Dame, I, I think that really was a huge difference. And it, it's it's great. I mean, if, if you're a North Carolina women's fan, you've got to be happy with the effort in this game. Yes, you're going to see their number uh, get lowered as far as, as far as where they're ranked, as far as the number being lower, but the actual ranking being higher. Um, I, I, does Notre Dame fall out of the top 10 with this one? Ooh, or, I don't know. Top 10. Uh, or, or, obviously, or, or, definitely or, top five. Yeah, I mean, or do you really give them a, a flyer and say, okay, it was just one of those nights. Mabry didn't shoot well. Uh, you know, Olivia it, it didn't play her best game, but, you know, certainly you know, she was a presence there. I mean, I, I it just popped in my head. I wouldn't yeah, have, interesting. I wouldn't have thought that. But as we talk here, I'm wondering, was there enough differences here where you they could slide out of the top 10? Yeah, that's interesting. One more thing before we look at that. Um, this is an interesting thing about Mabry, and I know I keep talking about it, and I'm not trying to keep going back and rebuttal, uh, and, you know, and, and protect your Jersey girl here. But uh, you know, her three point shooting has been pretty decent so far this year. Obviously, she's a fantastic three point shooter. She's almost shooting forty percent from the three point line this season. Oh, um, in away games, though, however, she's only twenty eight percent from three point line. So. A little sure. interesting thing here that she's not having it. She's having, she's struggling a little bit in away games. As for that question you just asked about, can Notre Dame fall out of the top 10? Obviously we're going to find out when rankings come out today, uh, but that's a really good question. Uh, well, we saw, I don't know. I don't think that'll happen. I think we will see, we saw too many teams lose this week. So I think we saw Virginia tech also lose to Miami. Well, we saw Iowa state yeah. lose uh, to uh, Oklahoma. I think they will stay in the top 10 but i'm thinking it's going to be just on the border like eight eight or nine or maybe even potentially number 10 but i okay. think they stay into the top 10 uh in this one they will fall out of the top five though i do think we will see teams like uconn indiana uh, lsu and, and even utah surpass them after this one maybe not utah utah also lost as well to unranked colorado so a lot of teams lost in the top 10 this week we're going to have a big shakeup once the rankings come out on the women's side steve yeah, yeah. I, I, I actually I'd forgotten about some of the the teams that that had had tough losses, but it's conference play time. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, these losses are going to happen on a more regular basis, I think, than non conference games. At least on the women's side, it seems to me that in non conference play, for the most part, it, it's chalk until you get into the conference play. But then once you get in the conference play, it, it's just the intensity level just rises on both sides, men's and women's. But I think on the women's side, I think you will see uh, more of a gunning for the top seeds as opposed to just trying to, just trying to play your game. Like the men's team will just try to like have their best game. I think the women take a certain amount of pride in knocking off a team that is either nationally ranked when you're not or ranked higher than you are uh, when you meet. So maybe, but it, plus there's so much talent. It's going to be just such a great year. So I think we're going to see a lot of volatility, not necessarily in the top five, but I think, you know, from six to 25, I think there's going to be volatility all year long. Yep. What's next for the Irish? Well, on Thursday, seven o'clock Eastern, they'll take on Wake Forest. Wake Forest is currently eleven and six. As for the Tar Heels, they just got a big win against Notre Dame. Now they're going to take on Virginia. They're heading to Charlottesville on Thursday, seven o'clock Eastern. Virginia sitting at thirteen and three. They've had a good season so far as well. That's going to be a very good game. They're coming off a loss to Virginia Tech, though. Uh, so Virginia also looking to bounce back. Let's see what happens. It's going to be a fun week of college basketball. Let us know your thoughts in the comment description below. What do you think about Notre Dame getting a loss to the Tar Heels in ACC play? Do you think they're a top 10 team? Do you think they stay in the top 10? Obviously, you'll probably have a cheat code once you see this video and the rankings come out, but let us know your thoughts in the comment description below. Hit like and subscribe while you're there. And thanks for watching Slasher U.